Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a Sony CD player CDP CE415. The drawer is out, but if I close the drawer, So this customer brought this in to me to be checked out. I think it's probably got a slipping belt. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it apart and we'll use a little acetone. And there's been conflicting comments on the use of acetone, but like I've said, I've been doing these repairs since the early 80s and I've used acetone to clean belts, heads, capstans, pinch rollers, and I've never had any adverse effects because of the acetone. It doesn't kill the belt. It doesn't shorten the belt life. If anything, it removes the contamination from the belt and extends the life of the belt. So I didn't close the drawer all the way so that I can actually pull this out. And so it's gonna be a, a motor and a belt that controls the turntable movements. Got to get this off. So here's the belt that drives the platter. And if I stall the motor, I can easily move this belt. So this might have been the whole problem. So let's go ahead and take this belt off. We'll get some acetone and a regular paper towel. And we'll get a cotton swab and we'll go ahead and clean the pulleys where the belt rides. Look at how easy that thing moves. And I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all barely turn the motor it's just the tip of my fingernail touching the motor shaft nothing more and it stalls the motor out so there is the little belt let's go ahead and clean it once again with some acetone and a paper towel because i just know the comments are going to come in okay so check this out this is in a little pyrex dish and i'm just going to actually pour some acetone into the dish and so the belt is in the acetone right now and now if this were plastic it would damage the belt but I'm just gonna let it sit in this acetone to show that it really doesn't damage the belt so we'll just let this guy sit in here for a few minutes so it's 117 right now I have a couple other things to do so I'm gonna go take care of those things we'll come back and we'll see what time it is just turn to 118 all right so it's now 142 so I'm gonna get my paper towel get a little acetone on it We'll go ahead and clean it. All right, the belt's all clean. Let's go ahead and clean the pulleys now. So I have a cotton swab with acetone on it. I'm gonna clean the pulleys off. Put the belt back on just a moment. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and put the belt back on now after it's been cleaned. So the same force as before. It takes a lot of force to hold that pulley back now. Have the center screw back in. So it is indexing the disc perfectly at this point. So let's go ahead and clean the optical pickup now. So here is the optical pickup. I have a cotton swab moistened with some glass cleaner. So I'm just gonna wipe that off. Hopefully you can see that. Now with the dry end, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it off and I'm rotating the cotton swab as I wipe off the lens. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the turntable assembly. I realize the focus isn't good right now, but I'm just gonna wipe off where the disc touches the turntable. I'm gonna get the dry end and dry it off. Now, I would normally lube the turntable motor, but there's not enough access down here for me to get into it. So next, I will load a disc into it. We'll close it. Ask it to play. playing. So one thing I noticed is the left channel audio, regardless of what connector I have plugged into it, cuts out. So 
So I think that Jack has a bad solder connection to the circuit board. So we're going to have to pull this baby apart. And look at the connections on the circuit board. And so let's look at the connections for the jacks back here. So this is as close as I can zoom, but go ahead and look at this connection right here. I can actually move it. Look at that. There's the problem right there. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and resolder all of these connections. We'll catch all the grounds as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and plug this into the left channel output. Ask it to play. No cutout whatsoever. Plug the other channel in. It's working absolutely perfectly. So I had the unit all back together and it did it again, but unfortunately it was off camera. But what I've determined is the mode select switch that detects when the drawer is in or out is not reading correctly. And I've had these problems before. These switches are very similar to those used in VCRs to detect the state of the mechanism, whether it's in the stop mode, the play, fast forward, rewind, eject mode. And so what we have here is silver plated contacts on the one side and then the other side is a disc with some silver plated wipers. And what normally happens is they get oxidation and so you can see right here it's a little oxidized and I scratch this you can see it gets shinier. So what I've got is this nice stainless steel toothbrush. And so normally what I'll do is just brush this and that burnishes up the contacts. You can see the difference right there, how much shinier that is. So we're going to go ahead and brush this out. Make sure you hit it in all directions. Get it all nice and shiny. Look at the difference. Thing really shines now. We'll get the other half. We'll do the same thing here. Now make sure you don't brush in this direction that you only brush out. All right, so the connections are all nice and clean. You can see the tips of them are very shiny now. So next I'm gonna take a little bit of acetone on my cotton swab here. And I'm just gonna wipe it out. Now the acetone will not eat this type of plastic. So it's only going to clean the conductors and not eat away the plastic. It's not that type of plastic. You can see on the cotton swab it picked up quite a bit of contamination. I'm going to dip my Q-tip back in the acetone. Wipe it down one more time. So if this were going to eat the plastic away, it would be absolutely black at this point. Look at that. Hardly anything came off. Now we'll go ahead and wipe the contacts off. Next I'm going to go ahead and just very slightly bend up these contacts to give them a more positive pressure. There we go. That looks good. All right, so the next thing, I have a tube of silicon dielectric grease. I'm going to get some on my Q-tip. I'm going to coat the conductors with silicon dielectric grease, as well as I'm going to coat the contacts with dielectric grease also. Now these two halves just snap together. Next, I'm going to run it around a few times. It's 
snap it back apart one more time. It just pops open. That looks really good. You can see the tracks in there now. We'll snap it back together. There it is, back together. Now we'll go ahead and remount it. It mounts right here. It just snaps into place. When I removed it, the tab was up. It does have one screw that holds it down. And on the bottom side of the mechanism, there is two plugs. There we go. They're all plugged in, ready to go. Now make sure when you reassemble this, that the hole is straight up because the hole is indexed with a pin. And now the pin goes into that slot on the top of the mode select switch. Now because this gear interfaces with this other gear, you have to make sure that you engage it fully. Now we just snap these retaining clips back on. That's good. So make sure that the levers work smoothly because they do interface with this gear. That one moves in and out. That one locks in at one place. So I have the drawer assembled. I'm going to rotate by hand the gear on the bottom to make sure it opens completely, closes, that the mechanism drops and the drawer reopens. Close it, the mechanism reloads. All right, so let's put it all back together and see if it works now. So I didn't show this during the disassembly, but the tray has these two tabs on each side and this one has a ground plane so that the bottom can be grounded through this tab to the top. So I'll show you the other side. The other side has these two tabs and that keeps the tray in line. It, the tray rides in this slot right here and the tabs allow it to keep in a constant plane so it doesn't come out of the gear mesh. Now the front has a couple of ribbon cables. The one small ribbon cable mounts underneath the chassis. The other one mounts in this large connector right here. So the front is popped on. Next we'll plug in the tab on the side, the ribbon cable. Plug in the ribbon cable on the bottom. This is the drive gear and belt to open and close the tray. And the nice thing, it's a ribbed belt, so even if it develops some slack, it's not gonna slip like a V-belt. Kudos to Sony. Kudos to Sony for adding a ribbed belt instead of a standard V-belt that could slip over time. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna take care of the situation, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the bottom on it right now. All right, let's go ahead and power it up. See what happens. Power on. It's going to look and see if there are any discs in there. If you look very closely right in this slot, you can see the infrared LED. There it is. You can see the infrared emitter is actually lighting up. You actually see the purple glow of the infrared emitter. So that's what looks at the disc. So the emitter shines up on the bottom of the disc and the receiver right here receives the signal if there is a disc in place. So I'm going to go ahead and open the drawer. And we'll put a disc in number one. Close the drawer. It knows there's a disc there with the infrared emitter and detector. And it loads the disc, reads the table of contents, and it tells me I have 16 tracks on that disc. So I'm gonna get the customer's Onkyo stereo receiver out and connect this up to it and make sure that it plays. All right, so I have my customer's Onkyo Stereo receiver, a TX8211 connected here. Maybe hard to see, but it's in the CD mode right now. So let's go ahead and open the CD drawer. Pop the disc in it. Close it. It's read the table of contents. You can see the time on the display right here. Let's hit play. I have it in the CD mode. And the volume is up, so it definitely is playing. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go ahead and make sure it plays all the way to track 16, the last track on the disc. And it's playing just absolutely fine. Now I'll go ahead and button this baby back up after I finish the video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation to my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.